Greg here again, this time with a video that's going to help anyone who wishes become a professional game developer, make money creating games or game courses in record time. And so in this video, I'm going to be creating and building up a brand new idle game course that I'm calling My First Idle Game. And as a special thank you to all those that follow me on this channel and those who have a passion for game design, game development, I'm going to give away 12, all 12 of my current game courses absolutely free if uh, you pre-purchase my first idle game. So you can just go down below and click on the link and get access to all my game courses at, at an incredibly low price as well as this new flagship idle game course that I'm creating now. So before we get started, please go down below, click like and click subscribe. It's very valuable uh, to me and every other YouTube channel. That's why you hear us saying it uh, when we introduce videos like this, how important it is that you go down below and click like and subscribe. So now let's go ahead and get started. I, I do want to go over a few prerequisites you're going to need to follow along with this course. So I'm creating this game in Unity 2021, so you will need to download Unity for free especially if you want to follow along. Um, I'm creating this course for those who are brand new to game design in Unity and brand new to programming or, or doing anything like this. So you don't have to know C Sharp or Unity to follow this course. Now that said, if you've never programmed before, expect to spend some time digesting the new concepts, uh, looking over the video again. And while this course will take you a long way to what it takes to build games in the real world um, and actually launch them, um, you still need to expect to spend uh, time looking up definitions and supplementing your learning and other coursework. And because of that, what I've done is uh, I've created a full book, an ebook that I'm going to publish along with this course. And I have uh, already started building it, so I have a little uh, example of it here. But we're going to give this away as part of the course as well. Uh, and, and that's something that I really haven't done a, a book along with a, a, a video course before. And uh, this, I believe, you know, I'm putting this together. I've spent the last three years building various kinds of games and courses. I said I have 12 and I, I've learned a lot from that. And so I'm really taking this approach now to make what I think is going to be a definitive uh, builder game and, and how to build out uh, an idle game. Uh, relatively quickly and even if you have no experience at all uh, it, it's still very very useful now I did want to spend just a minute to say why make an idle game is like one of your first games I call it my first time and uh, there's a lot of games you could build at first you could build a first person shooter you could build a strategy game you could build you know some some kind of puzzle game but um, idle games have uh, some qualities. One, they're very popular and, and they do well. It, it's an easy game design to understand. Uh, it's also technically easy to make a simple game. Um, you, you can make an idle game out of almost any activity um, and there are infinite possibilities. You can do, do idle games on cooking, on sewing, on uh, it, you know, hiking, it, it, any activity uh, or, or passion or hobby that people have, it's nearly almost, uh, it, it, it's almost always possible uh, to create an idle game from, from that. So you can follow your passions, the things you enjoy doing and build little idle games around them. And also, uh, because that reason gives you a lot of creative freedom and you can really make it your own in your first effort. So the idea of this course is I'm going to build this game up we're building it uh, based on like a Clicker Heroes model. So you will want to go and download Clicker Heroes if you are not familiar with it. It's free on um, Android or Apple iOS. I, you can get it on Steam as well. So there's uh, it's free and it, it's a good little idle game. And it has the kind of mechanics that will literally let us uh, get into some things uh, game development wise. Now, one of the things I've done to try to help everyone along is I've created, if I scroll down here in my, in my uh, draft of our, of our book that we're making here, if I scroll down all the way bottom, I have a glossary here of important terms that I'm including in uh, the course as part of this ebook. So uh, I'll be expanding on this as I'm creating the course. I haven't done any of the video recording yet so far, but as you can see, I've been building up the content here so that uh, 
It's going to be very well structured and organized and a fast way to learn. So with that introduction, I'm going to go ahead in this first video and build out the project, get the project started up and lay out the user interface uh, for the very first features of our game. So we'll begin. We just come down uh, and bring up Unity Hub. And once you bring up Unity Hub, uh, you're going to pick the version of Unity you're, you're going to target. I'm targeting targeting 2021 2.3 F1. You should be able to follow along with this course pretty much any version of Unity 2020, 2019, 2020, 2021. The, the, the methods and the design patterns I have used are proven and, and they're going to stand the test of time. So they'll, they'll be useful um, moving forward as well as I'm working with older versions of Unity. But most likely, you know, go with 2021, uh, one of those versions that's a final release. And so what you're going to want to do is make sure you got 2D Core selected here and you title your project name. I just called my, my first idle game and pick a location of where you want it. And then you just click create project and we are off to the races creating our very first idle game in Unity. And after the project is created, it brings up the Unity editor. And here we are with a blank project ready to begin building uh, our first idle game. Now, I'm not going to go through an exhaustive Unity editor tutorial. There's lots of videos on YouTube about the Unity editor and just the mundane task of exposing all of that it does. But what I am going to do is spend a little bit of time and while we're going through this, making sure that you can do these processes even if you're brand new. So in the center here, we have the scene window where we put out all our objects and design our scene and what we want to look what it to look like and each project can have multiple scenes in it and the little tab over here we have a game tab that lets us see what the game's gonna look like we can always redock this say like some people might like redocking it down here so as you're laying stuff out you can always see what it looks like um, we don't want this asset tour store tab on here at all it just uh, just left over from something else and so then on the left, we have the hierarchy, and this is where we put all of our game objects. It's going to have everything that's in the scene that we put out here will be listed here by clicking on them. We'll select in the scene what we've clicked on over here, as well as show here in this inspector tab on the right, all of the components that make up this given object. So we call these game objects over here, and this is a game object. And then every game object has at least this transform component. So this transform component is going to be on every game object. On UI components, it's a transform component, but with extra features for layout and positioning and, and things like that. And so Unity is a very component-based system in which we create game objects here that have components and every game object can have as many components as you wish to stack on it. And in this case, you'll see that we have a transform component, which I've already said every game object has. And this one has a camera component. You can see here it says camera and you can use this to expand the component and see everything. So for example, if we wanted to, we can change the background of our game here if we like. And I believe I pretty much left it the same for a lot of these, but let's, we can make it like a, more of a sky blue or something if we wanted. And when we add new objects, we're going to have, of course, different components that make up these objects. So we're going to begin laying out our scene. And remember, we're building a Clicker Heroes modeled game. So as I'm building this course, we're using Clicker Heroes, which is a very popular game, as a, a, a template for the kind of design we're going from. We're not we're not making a copy of uh, Clicker Heroes. We have no intention with this game to just publish a Clicker Heroes clone. It would do horribly anyway. Uh, but what this is great for is showing you how to build a game design that is very robust and flexible, has, has some interesting components in it that you should be able to break apart uh, and use to build your own idle game. So with that said, I assume you know a little bit about Clicker Heroes. We're going to spend the first few lectures working on the enemy 
clicking the enemy, creating gold from clicking on the enemy. So even though it's called Clicker Heroes, uh, the clicks are always on the enemies in Clicker Heroes. That's where you're clicking. And so that's where we're going to start with so we can get a little bit of a game up and going and, and you can actually uh, have something to build on and show people if you like. So let's go ahead and lay out those two elements that are essential one will be the enemy we click on right here and the other will be the gold that we make right up here so to add these elements to our scene i right click and come down to ui and i'm going to choose image to make our enemy image now what's interesting is you'll notice that when i did that it put this big white square here and um if i scroll out you'll notice that there's a big large rectangle here and then there's this little itty bitty tiny rectangle down here now believe it or not the little tiny rectangle down here is actually where you would build a, like a sprite based game like a platformer or anything where you have textures and things like that moving around this bigger rectangle is uh, more of a user interface rectangle which actually for the first parts of this idle game is exactly what we want. We can build this game pretty much with entirely a UI design. And so um, before we actually lay it out, let's go down here and I'm gonna bring the game up here so that we can see it a little better. And I'm gonna change this from free aspect to full 1920 by 1080. You should always have at least some sort of uh, aspect ratio and resolution you're targeting there's tools that will help you make it so that you can target different resolutions uh, fairly easily but um, i shouldn't say fairly easily you typically you're going to want to have as you're building some sort of target reference of what you believe a majority of your players are going to play on and, and build towards that and then when you get in a, in a more completed state maybe you might want to put some layout elements in and, and change some things around so that it will display on different different screen sizes and so forth. So for now, we're going to leave like this. And you can see that this is representing our rectangle there. And if I scroll up, you'll see that this is the scene view of that. So I'm going to pick this object up. I'll make it a little bigger because it needs to be bigger anyway. And this is where the enemy will be. It'll be just like right there. And there's no picture for them yet. This is just a blank image. You'll notice over here under source image, it says none. And we'll now want to add an image. Now, I, I got my images from opengameart.org. And opengameart.org is a Creative Commons license where you can use and put <clears throat> all these objects in your game. <clears throat> the only really limitations that I'm aware of with Creative Commons is you can't take those images and pass them off as your own and sell them in your own uh, art content as your own. You, you, you're perfectly free to change them and modify them, do whatever you like to them and create derivatives of them. But you're always supposed to have some kind of... Um, not, you're not supposed to pass it off as your own art. You know, you still need to credit the original authors and not take away from their efforts. So with that said, I go to opengameart.org and I downloaded this simple little monster graphic we'll use for our, our, first, uh, our first enemy here. And here I brought up some pictures. I'd used them in another project. And you'll see here that we have the pictures. These uh, notepad files looking things, these .meta files, those are files that Unity will create automatically for us. So you don't have to worry about them. But I'm going to take this Abner guy. <clears throat> and drag him in. He'll be our first enemy in the game. And you can see it put his little face down there. And when you click on him, you'll see uh, him down here as well. Now, if you're importing your own enemy, or your own image for your enemy, you'll just want to make sure that you have the texture sprite changed up here to sprite uh, to uh, 2D and UI. And then you'll have this apply will become available and you'll be able to uh, click on that. And so uh, with that, we'll have uh, the sprite and we can assign it to this image on our screen by either clicking this little button here and choosing them here, or you can actually take them and drag them into this slot. And then a lot of times in Unity, you will be dragging things into items in the inspector to create references or links to various assets in your game. So there is Abner, he's ready, uh, 
to be in the game. And so now we have our image and I'm, I always rename the objects when I create them. So we're going to call this enemy image because we're going to have other images in our game. It'll just get confusing if we don't rename our objects as we create them. So now we need a, 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 a text object to hold our gold. So I'm going to right click canvas again, come down to UI and I'm going to choose text dash text mesh pro. Now text mesh pro is going to require you to import some some assets and so i'm going to click to import what they call the tmp essentials into text mesh pro here now we will probably import the rest of these later but for this one this will be fine and so i'm going to make this bigger and get it up here and we, notice how when we click on things our inspector over here now is always going to show us what components we have and that's going to be critical for you to understand this as we build games because we're going to be accessing these components through scripts and understanding uh, how, how, how they're in here is, is really important. So notice that in our enemy, enemy image game object, we have our transform that I told you we'd always have. And I also told you that they'd be a little more complicated for user interface elements. As you can see here, we have quite a few extra things that are not part of the transform for the camera, for example. Back on the enemy image here again, you'll see that we have our in image component. We already filled it in. And when we click on text, you'll see that in addition to the rec transform, we always have a renderer that we have this text mesh pro component. And here is where we can change the text. So let's just say gold colon. And I like to put what I'm going to change dynamically or I want the code to change in, print, in, in little brackets here. The other thing we want to do is raise the font size. Let's make it 75 so it's bigger. And so now, now our gold is bigger. We can bold it. Um, we could give it a color if we like. So we can go here and maybe what we want to do is use this eyedropper and pick the color off of, of him for our gold color. Just something that you can do just knowing that that's there. Um, and so now we can go ahead and run this and see what kind of visual representation we get when we run the game. And that would be a bit like you would expect. That color choice doesn't work out really well. Um, so we'll just change it back to white for now. Um, but you'll notice if we click over here on game that we're getting a very, we're getting the same look. So you don't have to always run it if you just want to see uh, positional layouts and things like that. And it'll switch automatically, you notice, to the game layout every time we run. So it'll do this little reload process, and then it switches to the game view when it runs. And when you stop, it'll switch it back to scene for you. So that's kind of handy. And with that, I'm going to end this beginning lecture. We really didn't, we talked a lot. I, I explained the, the basics for this course. I'm really excited about it, and I hope you guys uh, that follow along will click down below and um, if you do decide you want uh, to, to learn how to become a game developer and, and are interested in this course, uh, only while I'm building it here on YouTube, it's just going to be over the next couple of days, uh, I'm going to be offering uh, all my courses uh, as a bundle with this My First Game, uh, My First Idol Game course. So you, it's a chance for you to get all my courses at a ridiculously uh, low price, as well as uh, getting yourself a, a very good uh, return on this. Um, I'm going to have the full book available. I'm going to make the, the beta of this book available, the one that you already see here along. Uh, um, I mean, it's already um, over 40 pages long. Uh, I'll make that available to everyone who purchases along with all of the raw uh, video course uh, you know, lectures and things that I'm building and it will come with lifetime upgrades. So if you purchase now, you'll have uh, the course uh, and every time I update it, you'll get up updates uh, for free to it. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you guys like and subscribe and will follow along because this is going to cover a lot of important design patterns and things. And I put a lot of time in making sure it's going to be a definitive course on uh, building idle games.